This right here is a fake bookshelf that I built for the engineering dads. And the closer you look at it, the more you realize it's fake. The whole point is not to assume that it's completely real, it's just so you don't look at it twice and you walk through my house. Now, the thing about this bookshelf that makes it cooler than just being a hidden bookshelf is it's actually an AI controlled bookshelf. Ooh, AI. How is it AI controlled, you ask? Well, let me answer that. And when I say AI controlled, I'm talking very loosely AI controlled. I've put some wiring electronics inside, which means I can now control it with my little Google Home. For example, OK Google, open says me. Acknowledged activating Project Alexandria. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty chuffed with this. This is Project Alexandria, an AI controlled hidden bookshelf that we built for the engineering dads. My name is Sean, also known as Uncle Toby, and I'm gonna explain how I got to the stage, what I learned, and how to build it yourself. Before I get into it though, first of all, one, like, subscribe, all that jazz, try and get us off the ground, and two, one of the things that makes this bookshelf really special is that every single book on this shelf is actually fake. That's right, it's very difficult to get book covers and I didn't just get books and chop off the edge and stick it on. I actually made all of them, and with the exception of the Witcher series, all of them are puns or jokes. That's right, I photoshopped pretty much every single one of these books on this wall. And a few of them uh, you might recognize the stars of, the uh, Lord of the Rings, so Longest Essay in Middle Earth, The Dissertation of Smaug, um, The Lord of Paella, One Does Not Simply Walk Into Mordor, uh, Lord of the Rings called me precious, it has a nice ring to it. Lord of the Rings, all the good puns are gone. I also put in all the Harry Potter series, uh, just changing the names to represent the movies. For example, uh, Harry Potter in the year you thought it was Snape, but it was actually Quirrell. I did actually get a few of the uh, self-help books here. So I've got Robbing a Bank Naked for Idiots, that was recommended by Jimmy. Um, avoiding, I mean, uh, Getting Rich for Billionaires by Jeff Bezos. Also have a few different uh, various title ones, so Cooking with Kermit, Lion Witch and Coming Out of the Wardrobe, Moby's Dick, The Infamous Crime in Porn, um, Pride and Prejuice, also known as Fruit, Gotta Have George R. R. Martin's kind of series, Got a Feast for Cows, A Thousand Pictures of Hay, Kidnapping Made Simple by Peter Pan, and I put a few out on uh, TikTok for recommendations because I kind of got uh, lost to imagination by the end of it. So I had Breaking Good, Curing Cancer by Jateco 2. He also recommended The Holy Bible 2, Bible Harder. And there's someone else who recommended it. So we did Holy Bible 3, The Return of the Return of Jesus. A few of the old Twilight series, um, two that we put in. So uh, Nothing But Porridge, A Thousand Meaningless Conversation Starters by Un Sean Uncle Toby. And Engineering Dads, Not Actually Dads Yet, uh, Call Me. I am actually single, so. Now, before I get into how this all kind of works, I want to explain why I built this project. It effectively came down to this. This here, this little contraption, is known as a linear actuator motor. Effectively, uh, it is a DC motor with a circuit and board that connects to a sprocket through some gears and then moves a gear chain through here. Um, if that's a bit confusing, it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is if you plug power into these two wires here, the right power, DC power, it will extend out like it is up here. However, if you reverse how you plug in those wires, it will then contract. And these things, while incredibly slow and very loud, they are incredibly powerful. And seeing these online, I went, you know what? I want to do a project with one of these. Now, I initially wanted to build a hidden door, but since I don't actually own the property I'm currently in, uh, no permanent uh, things were allowed to be built, unfortunately. And additionally too, when I was building this project, I was planning to move out. So I wanted something that was portable that I can take with me. So I came up with the idea of a hidden shelf or a hidden wall. Now the other thing that I really wanted to work with is Wi-Fi development board. And using Wi-Fi development boards means that you can open up an entire arsenal of Internet of Thing appliances and tools. And this is just one of them. I've never seen anyone else build a project like Project Alexandria. Now James definitely has the edge on me here. James is the other engineer of the Engineering Dads. He has been developing a few different Wi-Fi projects for fun. One of them of note is a uh, humidifier that is shaped like Charizard that he controls over his phone. And it just gives you an idea of how powerful this technology is. And wanting to work with both the linear actuator and the Wi-Fi development board, I built Project Alexandria, an AI controlled bookshelf. 
Definitely not the most useful projects, but now I have a very good understanding of how both of those work. So I have a lot more things I can do going into the future, and it opens up the, a lot of different projects I can do to try and actually solve a general problem. This is definitely isn't any problem. This is a hobby, hobby project. But I really want to take the engineering dads down a path where solving genuine problems, and we can only do that by learning and developing more. So subscribe to our Patreon, it really helps. These are not cheap projects. <laughs> okay, how it works. Effectively, everything's controlled by this little plastic box of things I've just chucked together. I'm gonna to make a separate video of a more detailed explanation of how everything works. This is just a quick summary to it. Effectively, I've got a Wi-Fi development board that connects to the internet to Adafruit, I believe which then also connects to IFTT. Now IFTT is an application that you can download onto your phone known as if then, then, if this, then that. I think I'll correct myself in the edit. Effectively what it does is it allows you to set up different automations uh, on different devices, uh, different applications. There's all a lot of pre-existing stuff. So you can change the color of your lights and whatnot and set up code. Me, I took it to be able to send communications to an internet website known as Adafruit. Adafruit has, sorry, Adafruit, Adafruit, I don't know, it doesn't matter. The point being is that is pretty much a dashboard of collecting data and it can also send and receive information. It can also connect straight to a Wi-Fi development board, which is why I used it here and is a very simple process once you do it once, which is why I did this project. So I can do it once, now I can do it again. Effectively what happens is with my Google commands, I can now connect both my Google Home as well as my phone to send and receive messages to Adafruit. Now Adafruit takes that data, changes uh, a switch on a dashboard that I've created. Again, this sounds complicated, it's not. Um, and then that will send an information signal to this Wi-Fi development board. Now this Wi-Fi development board is then connected to a relay and I've run some scripts, which I'll again post in the other video of how it actually controls it. But this relay will turn the switch in one way or the other using the exact same power supply. So that was one thing to do. Additionally too, I've also hooked up a bunch of LED lights. Um, funnily enough, these LEDs is actually just one string and one wire all the way through. Effectively, just by changing the grounding wire on each of the LEDs means I can change the color on the fly. I've got red up here, I've got blue, green, white. I then ran out of colors because I got a really cheap LED strip. And so this one is actually a combination of red and blue, which gives it that, a little bit more of a purple vibe. It looks kind of probably bluish on the camera, but effectively it's just one string all the way through controlled by one of those relays. And this means I can put things in here that I don't really always need. For example, I've got some alcohol that I don't usually touch, but I don't want other people to touch, so it's mine. Uh, I've got my fragrances and watches and whatnot. I've got my collection of Ray's energy drinks. I've also got a few different games, I don't know why. And of course, my favorite books. A little ironic that I've got books in a hidden bookshelf, but I like those ones and I don't want other people reading them, so. And the final part of this video is just to explain a few things I learned while building this project so that you won't make the same mistakes that I did. Now, first of all, one, linear actuators, very simple to use, but measure twice, cut once. Now, when you buy linear actuators, they go to a certain length out. Now, if I had calculated this correctly, I wouldn't need to put in manual stoppers in here. Effectively, this can actually extend further than I've set it to. If it does, it's gonna rip the whole door off, which is not ideal. Additionally, too, I've actually had to make a cut in here so it actually slides all the way through. If I was to do this project again, I would definitely get the right sized. I oversized this. Um, definitely don't. Just get the right one the first time. You can buy them pretty much on all online retailers. So very useful bits of kit that I really do recommend using. Secondly, this one really messed me up. Um, the Wi-Fi development board that I bought uh, has certain pins on it. Now, if you are familiar with Arduinos, you get a row of pins like D1 to D13. All the Ds, yes, get all the Ds. Now, D1 means digital one. And so when you write the code, you say, I would like something to happen from digital one. Brilliant, that's great. The development boards are not wired that way. When it says D1, it means actually analog five. There's actually a schematic showing how the actual numbers on the screen match up to the actual wiring for the software. It, it was so annoying, it took me like a week to figure out. Don't make that mistake, read the schematics. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> And the third and final thing that I learned from doing this project is how rewarding it is to do a hands-on project once in a while. Um, I hadn't done one for a little bit. This is the first one which required a lot of work. And 
Almost all of the mechanical components that you see here was done in two days. Chucked a can of energy drink, then my little razors back there. That's why they're getting the spotlight because they're the reason I got this project done. Sorry, I just want to jump in and add something to the video here. Um, since recording this video and thinking about how much Ray's uh, contributed to this video, we actually reached out to them and we're now part of the Ray's Ambassador Program. So um, for all those in the US, it's 15% off if you use this a discount code. Link in the description down below. Anyways, continuing on. And just went to work and built everything in pretty much two days. It was so much fun just kind of switching off and just imagining something and making it into real life. And my definition of engineer is not really uh, the same that the world has. People say you need a degree to be an engineer. Yeah, okay, for, for career-wise, sure. But a real engineer is just someone who solves problems. Some of the world's best engineers never got an engineering degree. If you're solving a problem, regardless of how useful or useless it is, you are doing engineering. So I really recommend just doing some hands-on projects at home, regardless of what it is. It is such a rewarding experience. I would honestly build just another one of these just to do it again because of how tranquil it was building it. And that's effectively the uh, background to Project Alexandria. It's definitely a really fun project to build. And if this video does get a fairly good response, I will go into a greater detail in another video of how everything went together. I might make a GitHub, explain the code that I worked with, the electronic side of it, so you can do it yourself. I highly recommend doing some of these IoT projects because it opens up so many possibilities and opportunities for your own home. And I really believe that the power should be to the people in terms of creating and solving the world's problems. Anyways, my name is Sean, also known as Uncle Toby. This has been a video for the Engineering Dads, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.